Hey folks, it's uh, George Kovach here. You're in my living room. Got a fire in the background. And uh, I've got my uh, surgical airway equipment here. I've got a number five and a half and tracheal tube. I've got a bougie and I've got a number 10 blade and a neck model and a neck skin. I've got a uh, glass of, uh, of Irish whiskey and I've got a little bit of olive oil that I like to lubricate my, uh, my equipment with here. So I just wanted to talk about uh, the surgical airway in it, and we've had a, a few success stories communicated via Twitter and via email of some people who's done tremendous jobs in, in rescuing patients in need of a surgical uh, airway. And I just wanted to go over uh, um, a couple things and show you what we're recommending. And it's sort of, it's a bougie assisted cricothyrotomy technique, and it's a hybrid technique where you, you'll use the blade as a dilator, and if you're having trouble, you use your finger as a, as a dilator. First of all, let's just review the anatomy that the cricothyra membrane, as uh, Rich Levin talks about, was really designed for us to enter with a sharp um, device. Um, you have the, the cricoid cartilage below, you have the thyroid cartilage above, um, and they overlap laterally, and the cricoid cartilage um, is there posteriorly. So really it's hard to go wrong in terms of uh, causing, uh, causing damage with uh, placing your, your blade. So, um, that gives us gives us comfort. Um, so, what's the situation we're in? Uh, we're in a situation where we call, uh, a, or everybody calls, really can't intubate, can't oxygenate, and you do need to rescue oxygenate this patient. So, usually, it's you failed with laryngoscopy, and your bag mass ventilation has failed despite uh, two-handed, two-person technique and placement of an oral airway, and within 90 seconds. Ideally, you should have placed, uh, tried to place a supraglottic airway, and if that fails, performed a surgical airway. And this is why it's important, is that if you are in this situation where you can't intubate and you can't oxygenate by bag mass, ventilate, bag mass ventilation, that you commit to doing a surgical airway and just give one quick try with uh, rescuing them with a supraglottic airway instead of you know, persisting with the supraglottic airway and delaying what ultimately needs to be done. Okay, so let's just go over uh, um, uh, techniques. Let's put aside the, uh, the issue of, of landmarking. The problem with landmarking is, is that uh, um, it's tough and we, it's been shown repeatedly that we're not very good at it. And there's different ways of doing it um, and uh, always, you, you should always begin with, uh, with as Rich uh, Levitin refers to as the laryngeal handshake with your thumb and your middle finger stabilizing the, the, uh, the cartilage here because it is very, very mobile in the patient who is uh, relaxed. Um, as opposed to you and I right now, um, it doesn't move much and certainly in mannequin models it doesn't move much. So you need to stabilize it with your thumb and your uh, uh, middle finger and then your index finger is trying to roughly uh, figure out where your cricothyroid membrane is and follow it up from the sternal notch, feel the, crico, uh, the cricoid cartilage and then you will fall into the, uh, the cricothyroid membrane or move from above from the thyroid cartilage and you'll fall into the uh, cricothyroid membrane. So from below and then from above, that gives you a rough estimate as to where you, you're going to need to be. I'm going to show and demonstrate this really without my, uh, my, my neck skin. Um, but uh, just so you, you can see things um, from, uh, from this perspective. So again, we stabilize it here with our thumb and our, our uh, middle finger. I'm going to hold a number 10 blade. It's key to have a number 10 blade. This is meant for cutting and incising the cricothyroid memory, not a number 11 blade, um, not a number 15. I'm going to cut with the belly of the blade. I'm going to make a long incision. I feel here, roughly here where it is, I'm going to make a long incision. Um, two swipes really to get down through uh, skin. Now my finger is going to feel through the cricothyroid, uh, sorry, through that uh, vertical landmarking incision. Now I can say, ah, there's where it needs to be. And my finger now is going to retreat to the to the top part, uh, so the bottom part of the, of the thyroid cartilage. And then I'm going to make my horizontal stab incision and I'm going to extend it towards me and I'm going to do a 180 and extend it in the opposite direction. And then what I'm going to do is use the blade as a dilator. And the blade is now going to rotate with the sharp end down. And it's key to go sharp end down. I'm going to hold that blade. 
um, with my left hand and now sweep the tissues this way. So I'm sweeping the tissues off to the uh, uh, patient's left. I'm on the right side and now I'm, I'm feeding the bougie alongside of this. Right, my bougie goes down, you will not feel clicks. But once my bougie's in, pl is in place, now my, uh, my uh, blade can come out and now I can place my uh, endotracheal tube um, over this. You'll often meet some resistance here and you might have to sort of you know, corkscrew this as it goes into place. It doesn't have to disappear much essentially until the, uh, the uh, cuff uh, disappears. Um, bougie comes out and I'm done. Okay. Okay. So let's just let's just go over again about the the hybrid technique. So we'll we'll do this whole thing over uh, one more time. So stabilizing thumb, middle finger. This is my uh, index finger is trying to find roughly where the cricothyroid membrane is. Large incision, two swipes to get down. Finger feels ah that's the place where I need to go. It retreats to the bottom part of the thyroid cartilage. Make a stab incision uh, through the cricothyroid membrane. Extend towards you. Then we're going to do 180. Extend toward in the opposite direction. Then blade goes down again. Um, sharp end down. It sweeps off to the side. I'm sweeping tissue off to the side. That gives me enough room to put my uh, my uh, bougie. Now if I'm having problems because of blood or I, I just can't get that bougie alongside, at this point, what I can do is have my finger ready to go in, and this is why it's important to have the sharp um, part of the blade directed down, and as the, uh, as the uh, blade comes out, my finger drops in it, in the, uh, the space here, and now a retreat, uh, the finger comes out enough that I can put the uh, bougie in uh, just alongside of it, it's going to um, go down, hopefully fairly easily, um, and then we place our uh, endotracheal tube um, as we did before, and all's good. It's time to do a, uh, a moonwalk and, and uh, celebrate your, your success here. Um, that didn't look so smooth, but uh, that's the way to uh, do a hybrid... Uh, scalpel conversion to a finger dilating technique bougie assisted cricothyrotomy it will work if you need it and that's all she wrote cheers <laughs>